Um, but we never let her know that she could pull them out. You know, I mean, it was never an option to pull them out and leave them out. You know, I don't think she probably realized she could take her implant off until she was 10, like a couple of years ago, <laughs> because we wore it every waking were just toys for my team. Mm -hmm. That was the biggest battle for us was getting yeah. in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jennifer has the funniest hearing aid story you'll ever hear. <laughs> about tell them about the I have beer twins. Balls. And Zoe's the hearing impaired child, Zachary's normal hearing. And I was in the kitchen loading the dishwasher. They were about fifteen months old, sixteen <laughs> months old. And I go in there and Zachary has a hearing aid in his hand and Zoe has a hearing aid in her hand and I don't see the air mold. So we're looking all over for the air mold. And I don't know who swallowed the air mold. Somebody took the air mold. So we have to go to the liner, we get an x-ray, and Zachary had swallowed the air mold. <laughs> she got new ear molds made. She got new ear molds. <laughs> the batteries. So do they have to go in and get the ear mold, or did he just? Not the ear mold. The battery, they the take battery, more yes. precautions, because he swallowed a battery also. But, yeah, we've been there. Have you? And we watched it day, that different x rays through the weeks or days, and you could see it, you know, moving on down. <laughs> but you saw it, the battery plain as day. He had the job, though, of going through the diaper to constantly <laughs> see. You. That's scary, though. But, but that's what they do. And we had the little hats, and she'd pull it off, and they'd both have a hearing aid. Turn back for a second, and mm -hmm. yeah, Joseph, he, he's not even four months old, and you just pull the hat out, and he's just <laughs> 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 like, I don't want any part of it. <laughs> 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 half time he's got his little hearing aids on, he's just sitting there miserable. And <laughs> <laughs> See, I think yeah. the hats are fabulous. We didn't even, I mean, there's so many things now that they have that, that we didn't have those. I would have loved to have had those. Um, they were, they were so cute. They keep them on. They fall on all the time. Mm -hmm. One of the things, and you know, just from Abby's perspective, I it, it's you know I think oh we'll have another year here and and we are spoon fed and Christopher thinks that school only has twenty kids. It's, it's normal you only have five or six children and you know. Riverdale is our district, and we're trying to figure out whether, well, for now, where we're going to go and so forth. And I just wonder, from coming from such a small environment, you know, I know how I already feel as a parent worrying about that. But Abby, did you even sense that it was so dramatically different than what you have been accustomed to being um, in a smaller environment? Well. Um I remember there was a lot of kids, and I was excited about that. And um, all the, all they were all so understanding. What they all understood, you know. And um, they thought I was so cool. Was it like because the siren would go off and the um, like fire alarm practices? I could take my implant off during that, and they thought it was so cool and stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, she did go um, to Los Angeles for kindergarten. Um, back in the day, um, the oral school had a co-op program with Lausanne where they prepped kids to get ready um, for entering into first grade. And so the oral school component of that, and you can help me out because it's been a long time ago, um, Miss Cindy was the teacher, um, and there was an assistant. Was there an assistant? Yeah, a speech therapist. A speech therapist. Um, and there were about, when Abby started, in that classroom, there were four, three or four children. I think that we started with four, one left right after their family moved. And um, one of the other children decided to go back to the oral school, so it was Abby and Will. And um, then by October, and, and the, the premise of it is that by January, they want those hearing impaired kids to move into the mainstream kindergarten classroom so that they can get a taste of the big class, um, lots of kids, a little bit at a time, you know, just a little bit at a time, kind of ease them into it. Um, by October, they were saying Abby should just go ahead and go in there. Um, and then Will's family ended up moving in November, and so she moved right into that kindergarten program 
at Lausanne. So Miss Cindy was with her. She had a teacher of the hearing impaired with her. Her speech therapist, Miss Maureen Nolan, if any of you guys know her, and um, Miss Brewster, who was the regular ed teacher. And I even think Miss Brewster had an aide. So there were four adults and about 15 children in that classroom. And that was an awesome stepping stone to Riverdale. Um, <clears throat> once she got to Riverdale, you know, in the first grade, the kids may have a lot of language, but speech is not so great. You know, some people have lisps, some kids have delays. Um, so they're all kind of like in the same boat. And she doesn't, um, she didn't stick out, you know, as much. And um, so she started there with and now I think she has 25 in her class. And they switch classes, and she's got a locker, and she's growing up, and, you know, um, it's that work that we did early on. I want to add just a little bit to that. Um, that program at Lausanne started in 1994, and I got to be a teacher. I uh, was there for four years, and um, it, that evolved, and now it's no longer there. They don't, they don't have a program for us in that school anymore. We also had a program in the Soto County for a little while, for about... I guess we had it for four years there, too. But we do offer a mainstream service, consultation service, where we will go in, have an in-service for the teachers and for the children, and help them understand how they can be a good friend to your child. And so if that's something that anyone needs, that's an option here as well. And use that. I mean, I would use anything anybody has to offer. Filter it. Kind of make sure it meets your needs. But use it. I mean, we didn't have that. We entered Riverdale, and every year at the beginning of the year, we stood up in front of the class. We explained to them what hearing impairment was. Kids could not believe that her ears did not work. They just couldn't believe it. Um, and then the teachers couldn't believe that her ears didn't work, and she talked the way she did. You know, she talked as well as she did. Um, and so we had to explain at the beginning of every year, you know, that if Abby's running in the playground and you're running behind her and you're screaming, it's not that she's stuck up or that she's ignoring you. It's probably because she does not hear you. Um, so that education is so important for their peers so that as they get old that they have a basis to understand what their hearing impairment is. And um, that's been really helpful. So anything like that, I would grab. Anybody else? If those programs just, the kids are just going into regular kindergarten now, they, it doesn't seem as needed. Is that why we don't well, have them anymore? Or they it? run out of space in the schools because enrollment has increased everywhere. And so if, if for instance, we started out with five in DeSoto County, and after three years there was only one child, well, that's not even cost effective to run a program for one child. Mm -hmm. and to give a whole classroom up for one child and teacher, so they just spaced them out, both cases. Any more questions for Abby? Okay, are you ready to go to school?